Hello, my name is Simon Price and I'm the UK Managing Director for Recommind. I'm joined today by, on my far left, Gert Raves from CEB Tower Group. And to my immediate left, Matt Ward from Information Risk Management at Barclays uh, here in London. In uh, recent months, we've seen a number of examples of banks bolstering their compliance efforts. Um, some notable ones, HSBC have recently added 3,000 compliance officers. JP Morgan, uh, some 5,000 reputed uh, compliance officers. Last week, I think Deutsche Bank um, set aside provisions for another 1.2 billion euros uh, into a pot of now uh, somewhere around 4 or 5 billion uh, euros for litigation costs. Is this a common theme amongst all banks or are these notable exceptions? And do we think this is an attempt by the banks to become more proactive in their uh, response? Well, I'd like to think it's, uh, it's definitely more proactive. Um, we have to prepare for a lot of different eventualities. We're going to have um, potentially more litigation um, as, as Deutsche Bank are uh, experiencing and preparing for. There's going to be a degree of uh, avoidance in the future. We don't want to uh, you know, continually have these issues. We want to learn and um, become more efficient at dealing with these issues. So bolstering up compliance and their role is, is definitely an important part of that. And, and, and these are definitely all proactive measures. It's clearly a double challenge. So it's not just about having more compliance staff. That will be okay when you have to meet the regulatory ongoing reporting objective or if there's a sudden ad hoc request for the regulator. I think the biggest common thread across a lot of these regulations like EMIR, FATCA, Dodd-Frank is that it changes the way you do business on a day-to-day basis. So having classification of customer data and product data at the point of trade, at the point of decision, that's where the real change is, as well as, of course, the post-facto compliance and reporting focus. So it's a double challenge. I think of the two, probably the, the, the overall system challenge and organizational change on when you're dealing with day-to-day business, that's the more important one. And that's going to absorb the biggest chunk of what we now term as compliance cost. But it really is a re-engineering uh, uh, effort across the business. Uh, recently, we've seen a, a number of uh, fairly high-profile appointments to uh, CDOs, chief data officers within uh, banks and, and the broader financial services sector. How, how do you think, um, for, for banks that are going down this route and putting a senior-level executive uh, to own the data, how do you think that's going to change their approach to, uh, to compliance across the, the broad product set within a, a bank? Well, I think seniority makes a difference. If you step back from sort of what's causing all of these fragmentation issues, it's the fact that as an industry, we tend to be very good at coming up with new products and then immediately creating a new operational silo, application silo, and inevitably a data silo for our equities business, derivatives business, cash business. And how firms are trying to solve for that fragmentation is a real challenge. Sometimes we try to fix it by selecting a new system by having some data re-engineering project going on but ultimately it becomes a question of is there someone senior enough in the firm to help bring all of those strands together so so i guess from a technology perspective it's very hard to have everything in a single platform but maybe what we're looking at here is trying to at least make the data in some form of uniformed um, single process or single uh, strategy so there's a challenge here I guess, between what the technologists are uh, providing and supporting uh, and the content that sit, sits within those systems. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that, that's where the separation of the two roles kind of occurs. You have the CIO who's heralding in and shepherding in the systems that, um, and the, for the products and then the chief data officer assisting um, to, to, to bring that all together um, you know, with the right level of taxonomy, um, with the right amount of information sharing, and the chief data officer, I would, I would hope, would, would, would kind of marry these things together. Roles like data scientists and data stewards, mm. I think, are equally important in getting firms up to that next level of compliance. And, and just on the, the, that topic, we talked earlier a little bit about the, um, for want of a better phrase, the throwing of bodies at the compliance issues and some of these uh, um, huge teams that have been uh, grown in these banks to, to, to try and get a handle on, on compliance. Is there not a, 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 an argument that with a chief data officer in place, technology can assist and try and um, facilitate change more effectively than, than simply just throwing more bodies at the, solution, at, at the situation? 
That's not a new problem. So whenever as an industry we've had scalability challenges, the first step is always, okay, let's get into a new product area that creates some sort of mushrooming of, of, of people trying to sort of solve an operational problem. Then technology steps in, things like standardization, harmonization, best practice. So it's a cycle that we've seen sort of in lots of other parts of our industry. Uh, but it's definitely true that up to now we seem to be in the early stages of moving from a people-based approach to an automated approach. Whenever we see automation go up, uh, error rates go down, scalability goes up, and ultimately it becomes a much more manageable and measurable effort. So there's definitely a role for platforms in, in trying to automate more of this compliance drive uh, and more of this information management. So, so maybe at the moment we're in that interim period where having tackled the problem with people, as technology creeps in, you still need people to influence and stabilize the technology. Uh, to, to get to a state of automation and, and maybe more industrial uh, automated processes. Absolutely. I mean, you can't set the computer or set the technology to do a specific job without someone operating it. Um, so, you know, whilst you know you can have an increase in technology utilization to help achieve this goal, you're going to need to use humans to ensure that what the computer doing is correct. You've got to be able to test that um, the way it's, it's managing things is correct. Um, you're always going to have changing regulation, um, which is going to affect the way that that needs to be managed. And a computer isn't necessarily going to be able to pick these up and, and, and do these things without that assistance. So, um, you know, I think there's, a, there's an equal role here for both. What we've learned today is with the, the people and the appropriate governance in place, technology that supports information discovery, classification and analysis become the basis to efficiency. And with good analytics and data management technologies, leading banks are going to be able to comply with today's regulatory requirements, but also those in the future as they fluctuate, which we're fairly certain they will do in years to come.